Hi everyone! Well, it's snowing outside, the days are getting shorter here in Colorado, and I thought it might be fun to do a project that would bring a little warmth and light into your life. Today, we're going to be going through how we make boardwalk candle holders. So the first thing I do is collect all the odds and ends that I'm going to use for my project and sort them by size and thickness. I've taken a piece of plywood, I've sanded all of my boardwalk pieces, and arranged them in an order that I think will make a nice interesting pattern for the final candle holder. When I'm arranging my boardwalk pieces, I actually think about what would make the most interesting design and not necessarily the exact shape that the boardwalk is going to be because the shaping of the boardwalk happens at the end. Right now we just want to create a really nice zebra-like pattern across the wood. I like to alternate between different colors, different types of wood, different angles. All of the pieces have been sanded. If you sand them first, you're going to get a closer fit and you'll have fewer cracks to fill. I'm using some tight bond wood glue here. It's not necessary to cover every surface with the glue. I just want to make sure that the pieces are glued down. So not too little and not too much is just the right amount. Now it's over to the planer to make them all the same height. Before you start using your planer, it's really important to know your machine well and to know how to use it safely and effectively. We're working with some smaller boardwalks here and before we send them through the planer, I want to make sure that they're going to be long enough for our machine. So I'll measure these. This one is about nine and a half inches and this one is about 12 inches. The reason that I do that is because underneath the machine uh, you have your two rollers and then you have your spinning cutting blade in the middle. If what you send through the planer isn't long enough, it can get caught between the two rollers, it can damage the machine, and it can totally destroy your project uh, and, and can be pretty dangerous. So I raise the machine all the way up. I've got it unplugged, of course, and I'm just gonna measure from roller to roller and double check my distance. So that's about seven inches. Since this is seven inches and these were longer, I'm good to go. We find that it's nice to have a name for your machine. Ours is called Bandit. All right, here we go with Bandit. Round and round we go, doing the planer dance until all the pieces are level. Here we have some other boardwalks that are in process. These ones have already gone through the planer so that they're all level and they've also been filled with wood filler uh, so all the tiny gaps have been filled. You'll notice that these are a little bit different size and shape than the other ones that I was gluing down. These are both uh, going to be larger boardwalks or for um, the center of a large table or across a mantelpiece. Um, I think these will be really nice for either of those spaces. The next step will be to use a pencil to draw the shape that we would like, which we'll use to cut out on the bandsaw. Wee -wee! Okay, now where did I put my pencil? Oh yeah, it's time to draw the outline. I start by carefully drawing a guideline on one side of the boardwalk. Using a compass, I'm able to keep the same width all the way down. I trace along the guideline and voila! I go back over my work to get rid of any funky edges and make sure everything's perfect. We move over to the bandsaw and I'm going to carefully cut along those lines.
the bandsaw always leaves little ridges, so we take it over to the sander to smooth everything out. Now, let's drill the holes for the tea lights. In order to drill the hole in the exact place I want it, I lower the bit onto the piece with the drill press off. With the bit holding it in place, I clamp it down. Then I raise the bit back up and turn the drill press on. Everything's solid and in place and ready to go. Next we'll grab old Josh the Bosch, the random orbital sander. Don't forget your hearing protection. What's that? The sander is going to clean off the wood filler, get rid of any of pencil lines, and give it a nice smooth finish. Don't lock your knees when you're sanding. Next thing you know, you wake up on the floor with half a face. Finish with some hand sanding to get inside the holes and smooth out the edges. We're here at the staining station. We're going to apply a natural stain that'll really make the colors pop and then we're going to put on a spray finish. A little spritz of spray polyurethane and the finish is done. I love how they've turned out. The finish really brings out all the color. The last thing I want to do is put some rubber feet on the bottom. Using the rubber feet as a guide, I drill holes for the screws. Can you really call it handmade if you don't use some hand tools? Mmm, golden yummy beeswax. <laughs>